hello there and welcome to my channel welcome back if you've hung out with me before today we're talking about sleeping beauty uh movie number 16. so this movie was released february 6th 1959. uh if you notice that is quite the gap between our last video number 15 lady and the tramp and now movie number 16 sleeping beauty uh this is because this movie took almost 10 years to make. They started production back in 1951 and then finally released it in 1959. And it wasn't that they weren't working on it. Every year they were doing something for this movie. It just ended up taking a little bit longer. So I found this really, really interesting. While watching it, I kind of noticed that uh, this movie is really about the three fairies, uh, Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether, and their story about protecting Princess Aurora. Um, it's not really about Sleeping Beauty too much. Princess Aurora, uh, I found out, is really only in the movie for a total of about 18 minutes. And in those 18 minutes, she speaks about 18 lines of dialogue, and that's it. Um, and she also sings two songs during her screen time and that's it so something i found really funny is that the whole uh make it pink make it blue gag argument between uh the fairies specifically flora and meriwether um was really inspired by true life events um i guess behind the scenes while they were creating this movie um the filmmakers were having the same predicament maybe not necessarily arguments but they were in that predicament of should we make aurora's dress pink should we make it blue and they kept going back and forth and they decided to put that in the movie so if you don't already know this the castle at disneyland is named after this movie even though this movie came out about four years after the park opened and basically the reasoning behind that is because they knew that this movie was in production like i said before so imagineers modeled the castle after sleeping beauty's castle to promote the movie and so that's why today in disneyland we have sleeping beauty's castle and there is a hidden mickey in this movie so during the part where the three fairies are discussing how to help the king and queen protect Aurora. Meriwether decides to make some cookies and tea by make, use her magic wand. And so when she does make the cookies, they turn out Mickey shaped. All right, so when I was watching it, I really thoroughly enjoyed it, um, even though Aurora it really isn't in it. But I think that's what makes the movie because the three fairies are really the main characters and they are just hilarious and you have a really amazing villain in this film. Going into it, opening credits are beautiful. You have the handmade book um, that opens the film because um, it goes into it like you're reading a story and then you see it come to life. And then you meet our main three, Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether, the lovely, lovely fairies who come to meet Aurora and give her gifts. The first gift she gets <laughs> is the gift of beauty, because that's all that matters. No, um, I just thought it was really funny that that was like the gift that they gave her, which I mean, I guess is cool. That's <laughs> She's pretty. The second gift she gets from Fauna is the gift of song. So now our princess is pretty and can sing. It was the 50s. <laughs> so then Meriwether goes to give her gift and I have always wondered what was she going to give her? We will never know because then she's rudely interrupted by Maleficent, this fabulous evil villain. She comes in with her horns and her high cheekbones and her red nails and just demands all the attention. And right off the bat, you know that she is bad and she is crazy. She's just this evil person who decides to hurt the king and queen's newborn. We don't really know why she does this, but she does. Then luckily, Meriwether still has her one gift to give her. And so instead of giving her the original gift, which I'm still wondering what that is, she 
can change the curse. So she can't get rid of it because Maleficent's powers are way too powerful, but she can change it so that she doesn't die and just falls asleep forever until someone comes along and kisses her. And that's when the three fairies come up with the plan to uh, take Aurora, pose as three peasant women taking care of this newborn child. And the king and queen agree to it. They think that that is a good plan, you know, take her away, bring her back on her 16th birthday, and all will be well. What I don't understand is, wouldn't she have been kind of okay, like, until her 16th birthday, and then maybe they could have taken her away then? and then brought her back after her 16th birthday. I don't know. I think it was a little too much, <laughs> but that's just my opinion. Whatever, they wanna keep her safe. They're off uh, raising her and it is now almost her 16th birthday and she looks like she's like 25. That's normal. She ends up meeting the love of her life, Prince Philip, but she doesn't realize that it's Prince Philip and he doesn't realize that it's Aurora. They meet and fall in love over a course of one song and it's, that's it and while she's out one of my favorite favorite scenes is happening between the three fairies they're trying to put together this cute little like birthday celebration for her it turns out to be a really fun scene to watch flora takes over uh, making a dress for her and Fauna wants to bake the cake because she's always wanted to bake a cake even though she has no idea what she's doing. And uh, Meriwether gets to be the model <laughs> for the dress. And it just becomes this amazing scene between the three of them. And I just I love the part when, you know, she's making the cake and uh, she hasn't baked it yet, but she decorates it anyways and puts the candles on and it starts falling and she uses the broom to hold it up and everything's like falling down. I love that scene and I think that's one of the more classic scenes too. And that's also where the um, make it pink, make it blue argument starts. Aurora comes back and all happy and then her dreams are crushed because she finds out she's betrothed and they have to go back to the castle that night. Which, again, I think they should have waited to go back at least after sunset or the next day, maybe, because Maleficent's curse said that before the sun sets on her 16th birthday that she would prick her finger and die. My logic would be to wait at least until the sun sets to go back then maybe everything would be okay. So they go back to the castle. Aurora is heartbroken and so sad. Maleficent's curse starts. Aurora is put in this trance and goes walking through the castle. The three fairies are chasing after her, trying to find her. And when they find her, she is lying on the floor. They put her in the tower to sleep and hope that Prince Philip will come along. They find out that Philip is actually captured in Maleficent's castle, and so their plan is to put everybody under a sleeping spell until Prince Philip can come along and wake Aurora up, and then they can wake everybody up. And they go to save Prince Philip, and one of the coolest scenes ever happens while they're there, and it's the coolest scene in Fantasmic and the coolest scene in this movie. During their big old fight, Maleficent turns into a dragon and is fighting Philip and the three fairies, and it is amazing. And then watching it, I found out it's actually the three fairies that saved the day, not really Prince Philip, because the whole time they're protecting him and everything. And yeah, Philip's being brave and whatnot, but the whole time the three fairies are saving him from falling rocks and arrows and things. And in the end, the sword that he has, they put a spell on it so that it goes directly into her heart and that's how she dies. Prince Philip was just kind of standing there at that point and I thought that was really funny and really cool because um, I never really caught on to that until watching it now. So they go back, Prince Philip gets to kiss Aurora and she wakes up because it was true love's kiss and everybody wakes up and has the celebration and everything's wonderful and that is Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> and my thoughts on it and everything. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, I 
really loved watching this movie and I cannot wait to get to the next one. Movie number 17 is going to be 101 Dalmatians and I am so excited. Um, but I really hope you guys liked this, this video. Uh, if you did, like it, comment, subscribe, all of that fun stuff, the usual. And I will see you guys next time. And thank you again so much for watching. It means so much to me. And I'll see you guys next time. Have a beautiful, magical, wonderful day. And really fast, I already like changed everything and took all my film stuff down, but I forgot to rate it. I forgot to rate Sleeping Beauty. Um, so <laughs> we're doing this vlog style now. Um, and I'm gonna give Sleeping Beauty four mouse ears. Um, it's amazing and the animation's really cool. Uh, the three fairies are awesome, Maleficent is perfect, and then you have a kind of cool uh, princess in there, Sleeping Beauty. Yeah, so four mouse ears, um, and that's it. Sorry for this. I just got really excited about talking about it. Alright, see you guys next time. Bye!